praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord as the year is running out. And the Lord who has seen you to this point, He will see you through to the end of this year. And He will see you through to the coming year. The great things He has done, the beautiful, wonderful things He has done. He's blessed your life, He's put joy and laughter in your mouth. I want to tell the Lord how grateful you are for his goodness, for his mercy. For answers to prayer, for your salvation, for your healing, for your deliverance, for your protection. For everything he has done. With a song in your mouth. With joy in your heart. Laughter in your life. Bless you and he bless your family and the great things he has done. I want to show your gratitude. To the God of heaven. To the God of yesteryears. To the God of the present day. And as the God of tomorrow too. The past and the present and the future. They remain in his hand. We trusted him before and he answered our prayers. We can trust him again. And he keeps on answering our prayers. And whatever challenges you had in the past, you can forget all those past challenges and look up to the Lord for the future. Because his promises are yes and amen. He never fails, he never can fail. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Heavenly Father, how we thank you and love you and praise you and appreciate everything you've done for us this year. Thank you, Lord, because of your hand, because of your promises that are yes and amen for all the great, mighty, wonderful things you have done. In our lives, as individuals, in our lives, as families, in our lives, as corporate body, the church of the living God. Lord, we thank you because you've been thinking about us and we can see all those good thoughts you had about us. And we can see the great blessings you have given us. Lord, we pray that our praises will not just stop today forever in our lives. We'll keep on praising your name in Jesus' name. For the dangers we overcame and for the things seen and the things unknown that we didn't even know. But you are taking care of us every time. Your spirit abiding within your angels, over and over us and around us and protecting, preserving our lives. Oh Lord, accept our praises in Jesus' name. For families that had new babies and new children, for those who just got married this year, and for the people you provided for the mighty things you've done, and for the supplies you made in every life, Lord, accept our praises in Jesus' name. Well, for the things that the devil tried to do, to disturb your people, destroy your people, but you reverse everything the devil wanted to do. And here we are today rejoicing in the Lord. We give all the praise and all the glory to you and the adoration. Receive everything in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you we can stand even here at this time or sit together or pray together for the things uh, that you have done to bring us to this place. We pray, O oh Lord, and your praises will never leave our mouths in Jesus' name. This year is coming to an end, and then we're going into the new year. Lord, we pray this coming year will be a really blessed, prosperous, spiritual, and progressive year for every one of us in Jesus' name. 
all the things you have promised us, we'll see some of them fulfilled already. We're praying, oh Lord, that more still to be done in this new year, we're going to carry all our blessings. We're going to possess all our possession. And every good thing you have for us, we're going to receive and have in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray the anointing will multiply in our lives. And as the anointings multiply, you break every yoke that may come near us in Jesus' name. On the right, on the left, on the front, at the back, underneath us and above us, we pray that your everlasting hands, your mighty and so powerful hands, will ever sustain us in Jesus' name. As we look at your word, this final message before the year runs out, and then we come into the new year, Lord, we pray the blessing in this word will belong to everybody. I will pray, Lord, that everything the devil has done to cheat any of us in the past, this coming year, it will not happen again. But just pray that your power will walk in a mighty way in every life in Jesus' name. Give us obedient hearts to your word, listening ears to your word, and Lord, give us the faith because the word of God says our faith comes by hearing, hearing by your word, and we know that this faith will quench and destroy all the furry darts of the wicked in this coming year in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself in every life. Glorify yourself in every family and our church as a whole together. Glorify yourself in this coming year in Jesus' name. No hindrance come this coming year. No limitation this coming year. No reverses this coming year. Everything will be forward ever, backward, never this coming year. In Jesus' name, speak your word to your people right now. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the progressive people of God said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. We're looking at the word of God as we are preparing to go into the new year. I'm sure you're preparing. I said you're preparing. And heaven will prepare you for the blessings of the coming year in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 28. We're looking at verse 16. Isaiah chapter 28. Verse 16 says, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay Zion for a foundation is stone. A tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Think about that again. A sure foundation, a sure foundation. And it says, he that believeth shall not make haste. The Lord is saying, I'm laying a sure foundation. It's taking about the future. And as we think about the passing year, we're thinking about the coming year. We're thinking about the past. We're thinking about the present. And we're thinking about the future about the future years ahead of us, we know that there is a sure foundation underneath us. And whatever may come, whatever may go, we pray that you'll be able to stand and get all the blessings of the Lord upon your life in Jesus' name. I just want to remind you that if you're going to have something you need to shed off, the old thing. You know, there are people that walk on the same road every time and they want to get to a different destination. There are people that think the same thoughts and have the same actions and have the same kind of lifestyle and they want to get to a different destination. We say, no, if you always do what you've always done, I told you before, you'll always get what you always got. Therefore, if there's going to be something new, something different and something spectacular, it means that the old must be forgotten and then something new comes alive in your life that's why we're reaching it there it says forget it all forget it all you carry a lot of baggage on your mind a lot of baggage on your back a lot of baggage in your life and you're dragging that kind of baggage this one happened and that one happened and that one happened you're not going to be able to get into the future with all that baggage. That's why it says, forget it all. Forget the words of slander heard. Forget the harsh and the cruel word. Forget the strife and forget the bitter taste and forget it all. In him, find rest. If we're going to find rest and you're going to be free from all the traumas of life and all the challenges of all the crises of life, you need to just forget what has happened in the past and just say, it's a new day, it's a new year, it's a new week coming and I'm going to face it with a new heart, I'm going to face it with faith and I'm going to forget what's gone. You know, but if you are still holding on to the past, people say they come into the new year and then they are still holding on to what happened in the past. You're never going to be able to enjoy 
all the benefits and all the blessings and all the goodness of the Lord the new year while you're still holding on to the things of the past forget it all it says forget the folk you know when we're talking about folks those are enemies some of the people who are folks they don't all frown not every four frowns not every foe gets angry openly. Not every foe appears bitter. Some of them are friendly foes. They appear friendly. They are false friends. But forget all about them. Some of them are fierce. Some of them are kind of, you know, terrifying. Forget all the fierce foes too. And forget the woundings. Uh, forget the rain. And forget the weather bad. Forget the suffering. And forget the day so cold. Forget it all. As time grows cold, it says you forget all the past. If you don't forget all that, and every time you're still thinking, so and so hurt me, and so and so abused me, so and so slandered me, so and so did this and did that, your life is not going to be new. It's going to be new in the new year when you have a sure foundation before underneath you, and then you have the road map before you that the Lord is saying. Here is the way, go ye therein. But it says, forget it or forget the storms of yesterday. And forget the rocks and forget the days so drear. Forget the clouds you have passed through. Forget it all, he loves you still. It's telling you that if you're going to actually have the newness of the Lord in the coming year, the new year, there are things to forget. And you better train yourself to be able to forget in your home between husband and wife. Some things might have happened. You know, some people, you keep a diary of bad, bad things. She said this, he did this. And then every day they're renewing their mind with, you know, all those uh, bad things that happen. Forget it all. Maybe you're a student, something happened in school, forget it all. Maybe you're a worker and something happened between employer and employee. And then, you, are, you know, every time you repeat something that hurts you, it hurts you more. Every time you look at a mountain and you talk about the mountain, it magnifies the mountain. Every time you talk about an enemy, the moment you talk about that enemy grows big in your mind. Every time you repeat a hurt, somebody hurt me. He did this, he did that. Every time you repeat all those things, it pinches you more. And you never forget because the more you talk about it and the more you think about it, the more it's ingrained in your heart and your life. That's why it's saying, do you want the coming year to be a new year? If the answer is yes, then you have some things to really forget. Out of sight is out of mind. But out of mouth is out of mind. Well, you don't talk about it. You don't think about it. Just forget it. And then you're able to go your way and say this coming year is going to be a new year. It will be a new year for you in Jesus' name. It says now if you forget that, you need to focus on this. Remember this is sovereign grace. Remember this the sufficiency of his power for every place and then over every foe with Christ within. We shall overcome with big and the victory we have overcome already. I said we have overcome already. And then you move on to the new year. I am moving on. I said I am moving on. You know, if you're all the time, you're always there. This thing happened to me here, happened to me. And you're telling stories, the things that happen. You never make progress. But you make progress when you break all the chains and shackles, the things that tie you to the past, and the things that tie you to the bitterness of the past, and all those uh, terrible things. And the actions that you normally show, that you normally demonstrate, so that you can remember, you remind him, you remind yourself that this is what happened. Some of those actions, you just need to forget about them so that you can really totally separate yourself and cut yourself away from the past. And then we're ready to run. And I'm going to say one, two, three, go. And when you hear the whistle and you run, this coming year, you will run fast. And you are going to get play to places and go somewhere because, you know, what if somebody wants to run a relay race and then it's tied to something at the back over there. And even though he might have energy and wisdom and liberty and all that, but something is tying him down. Because of what is tying him down, he'll not be able to run. That's what I'm telling you, that you forget the past and break everything that ties you to all the sins of the past. And then when you hear one, two, three, go in the new year, I'm telling you something is going to happen. And joy in your heart, laughter in your mouth. And you're going to have the progress that the Lord has for you in Jesus' name. 
Why don't you read that verse again? It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. I'm talking about a sure foundation for the future. A sure foundation for the future. You're going to have the everlasting arm underneath you this coming year in Jesus' name. The power and the promises of the Lord for your life in this coming year that you'll be able to say, praise the Lord. I just threw away the past and now I'm, I'm running on to the future. And my future is brighter, much, much brighter than the past. It will happen to you in Jesus' name. It says, therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion. A foundation, a stone, a tried stone. Then it says, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth. Who is that? I said, he that believeth. Where is he? He that believeth. Where is he? You know, at this coming year, you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm going to be a believer every moment of every day. I just wake up in the morning. I look at the promises of God. I said, this is not going to be like last year. This is not going to be like yesterday. Because every day you wake up like this and you see the almighty God. You see his promises that will never fail. You see the support that the Lord is going to give you. And you say, Lord, I believe. And at the end of the past year, beginning of the coming year, you told me, he that believeth shall not make haste and shall not be confounded. You will not be confounded this year in Jesus' name. A sure foundation for the future. A sure foundation for the future. I'm going to divide to three parts. Number one, building the future on a sure foundation. Building the future on a, on a firm, on a sure foundation. How do you build the future? You see there are people that try to build a house and there's no foundation. They try to build a life and there is no foundation. They're trying to build a family and there is no foundation. They're trying to build the future. And many people are just saying, you know, Pastor, happy new year, happy new year, prosperous new year. And they want a new year in the coming year, but there is no foundation. If you're going to have a great future, you're going to have a glorious future, you're going to have a real future that is better, brighter, happier, greater than the past, there must be a foundation foundation on that on that future that you are building that's why it says that uh, we're going to have this cornerstone the chief cornerstone and he that believes on that chief cornerstone shall not make his we're looking at first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 you see that uh, this first peter chapter 2 actually quotes uh, what we have read now in isaiah first peter chapter 2 i'm reading here from verse 5 it says he also as lively stones are built up in spiritual house that means the lord is building your life he's building a future for you and when the lord builds your life and builds your future see what he says then he says and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is, con it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief stone, a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall, tell me the rest, shall not be confounded. He that believeth, that is how to build your life. That you have something that came from heaven, a word that came from heaven, a word that came from your, to the door of your soul, a word that came from your creator and redeemer. I will say, Lord, that is what I believe. That is what I'm standing on. That is what I'm building my future on. It says, He that believeth. You know, some people, they go around like they say, I'm confused. But if you believe, you'll not be confused. I'm confounded. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just saying, you know, I'm overrun. I'm overwhelmed. Everything bad is happening to me. If you believe, everything will be all right. I said everything will be all right. As you see, you know, you're coming to this uh, new year, and then you're saying, oh, Lord, I believe, I believe. And it says, he that believeth shall not be ashamed. He that believeth shall not make a seed that believeth shall not be confounded. This coming year, you live a day at a time. Just wake up and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe that something good is going to happen to me today. I believe that something glorious and great is going to happen to me today. I believe that all those things God has in store for me in heaven, that today a part of it is going to be fulfilled. I believe today I'm not going to have any reverse. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make uh, progress.
progress because every day there's going to be a little added, a little added, a little added. You tell me, if 1% is added one day, and the following day 1% is added, the following day 1% is added, in 100 days, how many percentage will be added? 100, that means you're just going to be, you know, double what you were at the beginning of the year before four months runs out, and then you're starting another percentage, another percentage. I'm telling you, if you are just a dwarf before, you'll be a giant before the end of the coming year. And if you are poor in the beginning of the year, you're going to be rich at the end of the coming year. In Jesus' name, if you are the fellow that is always sorrowful, always suffering, always looking down, I don't know what is happening to me sometimes on the mountain, sometimes in the valley, nobody loves me, and nobody cares for me, even the church, even our pastor, I wanted to see this, I couldn't see, and always complaining, I'm telling you that when you add a percentage of progress, 1%, 1%, 1% every day, but just wake up and say, Lord, I believe today something good is going to happen to me. I believe today friends are going to come to me. I believe today that my foes and my enemies, they're going to dress a little bit back, a little bit back every day. And by the time you come to the end of the year, you look at yourself, you're this tall, higher than what you were at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, you are this lean, but now switch up, you're fat at the end of the year. And then when we see you, we'll not know you again in Jesus' name. Like, uh, you know, the brother that gave the testimony that said, uh, who knew me will not know me anymore. It's going to happen to everyone in Jesus' name. He that believeth, I'm a believer. I said I'm a believer. I believe in the Almighty God. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I believe in the promises of the Lord that will never fail. I believe in the Holy Ghost that is the power of God in man. I believe that all the promises of God are yes and amen on my behalf. I believe that all things work together for good. For them who are the called of God and those who love his name. And I believe that this coming year, I'm going to be more than double what I was before in Jesus' name. What I say for myself, I say for you, this coming year is going to be wonderful in Jesus' name. Because you are building the future on a sure foundation. There is a word of the Lord that comes to you. And then, you know, maybe in the past you're worried about enemies, you're worried about oppression, you're worried about attacks, you're worried about demons, you're worried about evil spirits. But you know that this coming year, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every mouth that shall rise up against you, you will condemn in Jesus' name. It is the heritage of the people of the Lord. And when you say, yes, Lord, that is what I believe. I don't believe all the whisperings of the devil. I don't believe all the machinations, manipulations of the enemy. All I can believe is the word of the Lord that has given him the promise that with long life will I satisfy you. And I will show you my salvation. That is what will come to you this coming year in Jesus' name. And then look at it. He says in verse 7 unto you, therefore... Which, which believe he is precious that's how to build your life in the coming year you just say yes i believe yes lord i believe unto you therefore who believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the hedge of the corner he is the hedge of the corner of your life in jesus name Acts of the apostles chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 11 Acts. Chapter 4, verse 11. Still talking about that sure foundation that the Lord wants you to build. That is, He wants you to build your life on this sure, unshakable, immovable foundation. And just to say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. And it is that faith that actually gets you through and pulls you through. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 11. This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there salvation in any other. I think we can put other words there too. You can say, neither is there healing in any other. Neither is there deliverance in any other. Neither is there happiness in any other. Neither is joy, neither is there joy in any other. Neither is there eternal life in any other. Neither is there forgiveness and freedom in any other. Any blessing you are looking for. You wake up in the morning. Yes, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. He is my Redeemer. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my provider. He is everything for me. He is my perfect example. It says, neither is there salvation in any of them. For there is none other name under heaven given 
among men whereby we must be saved. There's no other name whereby we must be healed. No other name whereby we must be delivered. No other name whereby we must be supplied. All our needs being made. And when you understand it like that, you are going to build your life on this foundation in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10, reading there from verse 9. We're still talking about believing that if you be, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart. Uh, can I stop there? It talks about number one, your heart. Number two, your mouth. Your heart, you believe in your heart. But you know, when you believe in your heart, some thoughts can still be coming in. You know, here we are quietly believing Jesus is my Savior. And then the devil is trying to say, well, but I'm your destroyer. And then you're saying, Jesus is my healer. And then the devil is trying to say, well, I'm going to give you sickness. And then Jesus is my provider. And the devil is saying, on the other hand, you are going to be poor. Because you're only believing in your heart. You're not expressing it in your mouth. But when your heart believes it, he is my Savior. And then you open your mouth and say it. And you say it out loud. He is my Savior. He is my provider. You believe in your heart. You say it with your mouth. He is my protector. You believe in your heart. You say it out with your mouth. And whatever he is to you. And whatever you believe he has given you. You believe in your heart. And you say it with your mouth. That's how salvation comes. That's how healing comes. That's how deliverance comes. That's how the blessings of God. That's how they come. And they will come upon your life in Jesus' name. If you have been the quiet, silent believer in the past, now you are a talking believer. Say what you believe and let the devil hear. Let the enemies hear. And let even yourself, if you have been doubting, let you, you must allow yourself to hear that this is what Jesus is to me. You believe it in your heart and you say it with your mouth. And then it says over there that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That God has raised him from the dead. Let's say, for example, you have a headache. And then the devil is saying, uh -huh, this is going to get you somewhere. You're going, you're going to die of this. And then you remember Jesus Christ. He was dead. And then on the third day, a power came. And then raised him from the dead. Then you say, my headache and Jesus who was dead, which one is the greater miracle? Of course, raising Jesus from the dead. Say, if God can do that, then my little headache, everything will go immediately. It will go. That will be a little challenge. And you compare that challenge with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you say, I confess with my mouth that God has enough power to be able to raise Jesus from the dead. And because I know this problem in comparison with the resurrection of Jesus Christ is like nothing. Immediately then I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that this problem in comparison with the resurrection is nothing. And I'm healed now, and I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm strong now, I'm strong in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm an overcomer. You become overcomer immediately in Jesus' name. Then it says in verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's, what, that's the way we're going to do it in the new year. And that's how we're going to build our future on the sure foundation. We believe it and then we say it out. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. For he is a peace, believe it and say it. He is a peace. And then it says, so as, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Give me a good amen. Yes. Uh, you see what the sacrifice of Jesus Christ has done? I need to explain that to you. There was a kind of wall between us and the Almighty God because of our sin. Our sins separated us from the Lord. But Jesus Christ came from heaven. He died for us on the cross of Calvary. And what he did was to break down that wall, the wall of enmity. The wall of separation, the wall of demarcation between us and the Almighty God, that wall has been broken down. What that also means is that all the blessings resided in God. My salvation resided in God, but there was a thick wall between me and God. I couldn't get that salvation, but now Jesus Christ died. Not because I cry, not because I'm sorrowful, not because I'm rolling on God.
because Jesus Christ died, the death of Jesus Christ broke down the wall of partition, demarcation, separation between me and the Almighty God. The salvation that resided in God, and then there was a wall banning me from getting that salvation. Now the wall is down. I can get that salvation. My healing resided in God. But there was a wall of partition between me and the Almighty God. Now that wall is broken down. I reach out my hand. I get my healing. Deliverance residing in God because He is the mighty deliverer and there's no power that can withstand his power but my deliverance resided in God the middle wall did not allow me to get that deliverance now the middle wall is broken down I reach out my hand now I have deliverance I was poor because my riches and my wealth resided in God but God was on the other side and the middle wall of partition will not allow me to get that wealth and that prosperity now that wall is broken down and now I am rich I said, now I am rich. And then joy and happiness resided in God. Because there's no sorrow in God. There's no sadness in God. Joy and happiness resided in God. And I was in the middle wall of partition. And I couldn't reach out. You know, one was morose and always sorrowful. This one has come again a heavy heart. But now the middle wall is broken down. And now I can reach out and my joy. Now I am happy. I said, now I am happy. That is telling us that this coming year, as we look at the word of God, and it said that in the past years, a middle wall, a thick wall, resided between you and the Almighty God, who had all your blessings. But now, all that wall is broken down. Something good is going to happen to you. I can assure you that every day of this coming year, as you build your life and your future on this a sure foundation, something good is happening already. And from tonight, from tonight, you are going to see. You are not going to carry sickness into the new year. You will not carry sorrow into the new year. All those heart attacks and all those aches and everything, you will not carry to the new year in Jesus' name. Because there is a sure foundation underneath you. And then everything that is negative that the devil is trying to bring up, everything with this old year, everything will pass away in Jesus' name. And if you believe, uh, uh, you, you believe already. I said you believe already. I, I shouldn't even say if you believe. I'm going to say since you believe, you will see the glory of God. And that glory will be upon your life in Jesus' name. You know, it, it, everything is based on believing. This coming year is going to be a year for believing. I said it's going to be a year for believing. And then things that you never saw before, you'll see miracle every day. In the house, miracle. In the church, miracle. In the office, miracle. On the road, miracle. All the prayers you pray, the years pass, that you said, where is the answer? God is going to collect all those answers and then put upon you. And this year is going to be a year of laughter and joy in Jesus' name. I'm looking, I'm looking at uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. And I'm reading there from verse 23. Mark chapter 9. Verse 23. Remember, the future should be built a sure foundation. That sure foundation is our faith. It says in verse 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, tell me the rest. All things are possible to him, to her that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. You believe. All things are going to be possible in your life. We're looking at Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. It says, uh, And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. The Lord is telling you that this coming year will be a different year. A year of promotion, a year of progress, a year of joy, a year of happiness, a year of the supply of all your spiritual, material, family needs in Jesus' name. And blessed is he, and blessed is she that believe, because there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken to her from the Lord by the Lord. Remember, just forget the past, because the past is no way to be compared with the coming future in Jesus' name. You know, it's like when you've gone to university, you forget all the primary school and all the kindergarten. But if you're in the university now, you're still remembering what happened in the kindergarten. And then you're going back to what happened in primary school. So what kind of man or kind of woman is this? You forget all that because we outgrow. We outgrow the past as we're growing. 
I'm, I'm sure you have outgrown all those primary school experiences in the same way you outgrow all the primary school experiences of the spiritual life. You know, this one said this, and this one said that, and this one did this, and this one did that, and this one did, did not do that. That's primary school talk. Forget about that. Now, this coming year, we're going to University of Experience. Yeah. University of Blessing. University of uh, the Abundant Supply of the Lord in Jesus' name. Like a professor is a much, much higher than that primary school teacher or primary school person. Your future will be much, much higher than the past in Jesus' name. We're looking at what happens when we really believe. John chapter 14, and I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. The Lord is telling me something here. I said the Lord is telling me something here. You know, what the Lord is telling me in this verse, this coming year, I'm going to receive it in Jesus' name. How about you? It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, you he shall do also if you have never prayed and you have never performed a miracle this coming year a miracle will happen when you pray if you have never seen signs and wonders when you pray and you have always been saying my you know coordinating pastor will pray and my overseer will pray my bishop will pray my whatever will pray this coming year yes we're going to keep on praying for you and then you, you yourself when you pray heaven will open for you he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also. And then he says, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the, unto the Father, unto my Father. It will happen in Jesus' name. That is building, building the future on a sure foundation. Point number two now, breakdown of a future without a strong foundation. The breakdown of a future without a strong foundation. I pity the people that, you know, uh, they, tonight uh, they are rejoicing and they see the old year is going and a new year is coming and they do not understand. They need to, they need to build the future on a strong foundation and they just merrily go through into the new year, happily go through into the new year. Some of them, they go through to the new year with bottles of beer. Other people go to the new year with, uh, you know, whatever they are going through and then they think that just because the date is changing, they think that dates change destiny. They say, the date is changing. You know, we're moving from this year, they mentioned the date. And we're moving into this year, they mentioned the date. A change of date, they think, is going to be a change of destiny. And we say, no, dates may change. And destiny does not change except we're building on a strong foundation. That's what I'm going to tell you very quickly now. The breakdown of a future without a strong foundation. Look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Dates don't change destiny. It's your decision that will change your destiny. It's your determination that will change your destiny. It's your diligence to say that the past year is going, a new year is coming, and this is going to be my approach in the new year. It is that decision, that determination, diligence that will change the destiny. I'm telling you that something new will happen. In Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, I'm reading there from verse 40, uh, from verse 49. Luke chapter 6, verse 49, it says, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man which that without a foundation built an house upon the earth without a foundation there is no sure foundation there is no strong foundation and then he tries to build the future then it says against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great that is the people who are trying to build the house of the future. They're trying to build the dwelling place of the future. They're trying to build a happy life for the future. They're trying to build a family for the future, a spiritual life for the future. And yet there's no foundation, no sure foundation or strong foundation of faith, believing and obeying the word of God. What a collapse and what a disappointment they are going to have. I pray that that will not be you. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7, verse 26 and verse 27. Matthew chapter 7, verse 26 and verse 27. Everyone 
that heareth these sins of mine and doeth them not. He hears these sins of mine that we have to believe. But he says, I don't know how to believe. He doesn't want to believe. It's like Thomas spending three years with the Lord Jesus Christ and is still waiting to see the print of the nails in his hand before he believes. Except I see this, I will not believe. Don't do like that in this new year. Let this coming year be a year of believing the Lord. That this is what the Lord has said. I'm going to do that because the Lord has said that. I'm just going to be obedient to the word of the Lord and that's how good things will happen to your life in Jesus' name. What he says in that verse, 20, uh, in that verse 27, uh, verse 26 rather, everyone that hearing these things of men and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. Oh, there are foolish people. Yes. The people that try to go into the future with no foundation, what foolish people they are. The people that try to build a house or build a family or build a future, or build a church or build a whatever. And there is no foundation. There's no foundation. Only joy, superficial joy, only excitement, spiritual, uh, superficial excitement, only the change of date we're moving to the new year only the you know or the explosive that they are throwing into the air only the crackers and that's that's, that's all they have it to go into the new year only just you know can you pass me a bottle that's all they have for coming into the new year what foolish people they will discover themselves to be he that hear this is of mine and doeth them not i would like him unto a foolish man and even those of us who are believers you know we've had the word of god at the retreat we've had the word of god on mondays on thursdays on sundays and we do do there we don't put them to practice it's like the moment we hear them coming to one ear gets out the other ear and then we say new year is coming new year is coming everything will be all right it doesn't get all right without doing the word of God. That means that this coming year, you're going to be a doer of the word in Jesus' name. And the best thing you can do for your friend is to tap him and say, be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. The best thing you can do for your neighbor is to tap them gently and say, be a doer of the word. Because if we're going to be doers of the word this coming year, something is going to be, to be different in our lives in Jesus' name. But says the one that does not, he'll be a foolish man, will build, which built his house upon the sun. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and then he says, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. My house will not fall. My family will not fall. My church and location will not fall. My ministry will not fall. My future will not be a failure. We build upon the word. It is as we build upon the word, then our future will not be a failure because we build something very strong. And we build on that sure, strong foundation. We're looking at Psalm 11, verse 3. Psalm 11, I'm reading there from verse 3. In Psalm 11, verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? As you're looking at the future, and then you're going into the new year, into the future, and uh, say, this is my hope, and this is my faith, and this is my expectation, and this is my prayer, and this is my desire, and this is my ambition, and this is my aspiration. This is all I'm looking for. You have all that piled up in the future. And you say, all that pile, let it have a strong foundation of the promise of God, a foundation of the principles of the word, a foundation of obedience to the word of God. It says it was on that basis that your future, the ambition, the dream, the desire, the aspiration, and all those expectations, it is on the basis that they are built on a strong foundation, on a sure foundation, that all those things, they are going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. There will not be any promise the Lord is giving you for this new year that will not be fulfilled. Everything, everybody say everything. Say it aloud. Everything will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. I see a happy man before me. I see a happy woman before me. You are going to be that happy woman, happy man in Jesus' name. You, know, you can live in a day without any care, without any anxiety, without any worry, without any problem, without any heartache, without any sickness, without any need, that, without any limit or limitation. The Lord is going to do it in Jesus' name. And the Lord is going to put me strong in your life in Jesus' name. 
this coming year, if you listen to what we're saying today, and then you build it on this strong foundation, I'm telling you that when we see you in the new year, it will be like you are totally new. Even your face will be new. Your smile will be new. Your provision will be new. All the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Even those who are living close to you, that thought they knew you, they will say, am I still with the same person? Or, well, you say the old man went away the old year, but now there's a new man for the new year. A new woman for the new year. It has happened already in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 8, First Kings chapter 8. I'm reading there from verse 56. First Kings chapter, chapter 8, verse 56. You want to mark this in your Bible because this is for the new year. I said this is for the new year. First Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. He will give you rest. According to all that he promised, there has not failed one word. There has not failed one word. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. The word of God will not fail in your life. I come to point number three, the blessedness of the future with a spiritual foundation. The blessedness of the future with a spiritual foundation. You have a foundation, it's going to be strong. And the foundation is going to be sure foundation. You have a foundation, it's going to be a spiritual foundation. And what blessedness we can see in your life, it will be so in Jesus' name. I'm looking at First Timothy chapter 6, verse 19. First Timothy chapter 6, and we're looking at it in verse 19. Sure foundation, strong foundation, and spiritual foundation. Lane chapter 6 of First Timothy, verse 19. Laying up in store. For themselves, a good foundation against the time to come. You see that? Against the time to come. The time to come. What's one word for the time to come? Future. It's saying you are laying a strong foundation. You are laying a sure foundation. You are laying a good foundation for the time to come. And tonight, you are laying a foundation. And when you lay that foundation, what the devil has no choice. He has run away from you. The sicknesses have no choice. They have to depart from you. You have something to do. Your future is going to be a busy future because there's something to do and something to accomplish. And everything that is negative, trying to militate against that prosperous future and that progressive future. Tonight, as we lay that spiritual foundation, all those sins are going to be taken away in Jesus' name. Tonight, you're free. Tonight, all the things that tied you to the past and tied you to failure and tied you to defeat and tied you to sorrow and tied you to all the, you know, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. All the impotence of the past and all the powerlessness of the past. Tonight, I cut it away from your life in Jesus' name. Anything that, you know, binds you with, uh, you know, an uh, impossibility is hereditary. That's how it happened to daddy. That's how it happened to mommy. That's the bad luck and son. Which bad luck? For this coming year, no bad luck in your life in Jesus' name. When you come to the Lord tonight and you say, Lord, I believe my totality, my heart, my life, everything I stake on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a spiritual foundation that the devil will not be able to touch you anymore in Jesus' name. That's why it says in that chapter 6 and verse 19, lean up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Life is coming. I said life is coming. Abundant life, eternal life, spiritual life, happy life, joyful life, and life that has no lack is coming your way in Jesus' name. Well, our time is going and we're getting to the new year. Everybody say, I'm getting to the new year. I said, I'm getting to the new year. Well, let me give you what you take in your hand for the new year. Don't forget this one. Hold this one in your hand, in your heart, in your mouth. And hold this one in your spirit as you are coming to the new year. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Wake up in the morning and read this. Lord, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. This is what I believe. Any other thing contrary to this, I don't believe that. The devil, I don't believe the devil. Anybody believe in the devil here? Anybody believe in an enemy here? 
You, you know, the enemy can show you pictures and then it says, uh, once they declare and they say, we don't like you. <laughs> you have a problem. Jesus loves me. God loves me. Holy Ghost loves me. The angels love me. And the saints of God who have gone to heaven, they're looking at me. They love me. Millions of them, millions of them, they love me. And you, I pity you. Poor self, you don't love me. That's your cup of tea. Well, thank God I'm loved by heaven. I say, thank God I'm loved by heaven. And when anybody comes your way and they try to say, I don't like you, I don't love you, and they say something, I don't believe that, I don't believe that. What I believe is what Jesus Christ has told me. What I believe is this sure foundation and this strong foundation and this spiritual foundation and this foundation, nothing will shake it in Jesus' name. Are you in the tour me already? I said, are you there? Are you in chapter 28? I, apart from being there on the page, is your mind there? Is your spirit there? Is your life there? Is your face there? Let's go on. They look at this and it shall come to pass. This year it shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the, unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. Everybody say this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city. In this city, blessed shall thou be. In the city where you came from, blessed shall thou be. And you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, that is what I believe. That's what I believe. You know, sometimes there are some people, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they read is the newspaper. And, they, and, and you understand newspaper. The newspaper is a, a reaching for the experiences of the people that, you know, the people, every read from early, every dick and hurry, every down and low, every high and up, every one on the mountains, under the mountain, all the experiences, have, that's, what, that's what is there. And they wake up in the morning like that, and the first thing they read is, you know, all that newspaper, and then their heart will sink. But you wake up in the morning, read this one first before you read that one. I said, read this one first before you read that one. Believe this one before you hear any other thing. And then once you have read this one, it says, you are blessed in the city. And you are blessed in the village. And you are blessed in the town. And you are blessed in the church. And you are blessed in the office. And you are blessed in the market. Your house, tall house is blessed. Your children blessed. Your wife blessed. Your husband blessed. Everything you touch turns to a blessing. After you write that, you say, Lord, that is what I believe. Any other thing I hear today, any other thing I see today, any other thing I read, in, I, will still, I will still read that thing I was can't throw. And say, okay, <laughs> I put that 12 bottle. This, what, this is what I believe. Which one do you believe? I said, which one do you believe? It will be unto you according to your faith in Jesus. Don't let the devil be the first person that speaks to you in the morning. Let the almighty God, with all his power, with all his promises, be the first person that speaks to you in the morning. And then after you say to the Lord, I believe you, it will be well with me today. Before you go out, by the time you come back in the evening, is the word of the Lord that will take effect in your life in Jesus' name. Look at it, look at verse 3, and it says, Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Your children will be blessed and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep blessed shall be thy basket and thy store blessed shall be thou when thou comest in and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out give me a good amen you know, are you going to uh, today is Sunday? Let's say today is Sunday. Are you going to church today? I don't know. The people I see in church, the way they look at it, but it says blessed are you when you come out, blessed are you when you go in. And anywhere you go, they'll be blessing in Jesus' name. Are you going to go to the office or go to school today? I really don't know. Those students are terrible. And to get into class and even to see the faces of those uh, young people, I, 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 I'm, I'm terrified to go to school. What do you mean? Because when you go to school, blessed shall thou be in the school. 
Are you going to go to the market, your market today? Those other market people, the way they said, if you don't contribute this and contribute that, this is what they are going to do. You, more than conqueror, talking like that, get to the market. When you get there, all heads will bow before you in Jesus. Because, you know, as we come to this, I'm telling you, this coming year, those who knew you before, they will not know you again. The people are used to threatening you with their visa, kill appearance, or whatever they do, and then they do this and you are trembling. You know, this uh, coming year, like a soldier, you stand up on your side your shoulder. And then you look at everybody eyeball to eyeball, and then you come to town, you say, I'm the one coming. And every lion will part away when you come in Jesus' name. And all those fears, all those things that are due to threaten you, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Then you are going to have enough and to spare. You know, you will be going higher and your enemies will be going. You'll be becoming more prosperous and then your enemies will be coming poorer. And you will be the one feeding them. I say you'll be the one feeding them. Because this coming year is going to be a year. I said it's going to be a year. And then we'll give you a chance to give the testimony. It will come to your turn. Because you will have something to say. Let, let, me, let me read, let me read. And so that you'll know what you believe in the new year, it tells us in verse 7, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou statest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people upon unto himself. And as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall, and they shall, and they shall be afraid of thee, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, praise the Lord, in the fruit of thy body. In the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee the, his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in a season, and to bless all the works of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee, and the Lord shall make thee, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken to the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. It will be as the Lord has told me. How many people are believers here today? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, I forget the past. The sorrows of the past I forget. The heartaches of the past I forget. The bad experiences of the past I forget. And all those uh, terrible things of the past experiences I forget. I now come into something new. I'm coming into the new year with real, real, great, great, great blessing. Come talk to the Lord. Forget all the words of the past and all the slander of the past, all the insult of the past, all the abuse of the past. Forget everything. All the things that made you cry, forget them. All the things that made you sorrowful, forget them. All the things that made the enemy look strong, forget them. All the things that made, you know, the evil doers as if they were the Lord of your life, the rulers of your life, forget all about them. All the lies people told against you, you forget only about everything. You say, I'm going to forget the past, I'm moving on to the future. And then I'm going to be obedient to the word of the Lord. Obedient to the word of the Lord. And then I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. My past is gone. And whatever you've done in the past, it says he has forgiven you. There's forgiveness. There's love. There's mercy. There's grace. And there is fellowship. 
come into that fellowship of God right now and just forget the past. And you know, if you think of the negatives in the past, you'll be sorrowful, you'll be weak, you'll not have even stomach to uh, be able to contain anything, your life will just be down like that. You'll be in the valley all the days of your life if you're thinking of the past. But then when you forget the past, say, Lord, I believe. I believe in mercy. Lord, I believe. I believe in grace. Lord, I believe. I believe in the love of God that sent Jesus Christ to die for me. I believe all my sins are gone. I believe all my shame is gone. I believe all my condemnation is gone. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead on my behalf. It was for me he died. It was for me he was buried. It was for me he rose again. I have salvation. I have eternal life. I have forgiveness. I believe it in my heart. I say it with my mouth. And it is mine. And now I believe that as I come to the new year, something great and glorious, something beautiful and gracious will be happening to me every day. Every day of this coming year is a day of blessing for me. Every day of this coming year is a day of joy for me. Every day of this coming year is going to be a new day, a new day, a new day. Every day of this coming year, because that is what the Lord will do. That's what the Lord will do. You give your heart to the Lord and then you know nothing in the future can shake you. Nothing in the future can destroy you because you're building that future, building that future, building that future upon the sure foundation upon the strong foundation upon the spiritual foundation believe that believe that believe that believe that let's believe that there's nothing that can touch your life or destroy you in this coming year blessings at home blessings on the street blessing in the in transportation blessing in your destination anywhere you go there'll be a blessing there'll be a blessing enemies will turn to friends Failure will turn to success. Defeat will turn to victory. Poverty will turn to prosperity. Sorrow will turn to joy. Sadness will turn to gladness. In this coming year, believe. Believe. Let this coming year be a year of faith. A year of believing. A year of believing. A year of believing. I don't believe my enemy. I believe the friend of my soul, the love of my soul. I believe my Redeemer. I believe the Lord. I don't believe Satan. I don't believe any human friend or any, any human foe. I believe the Lord. It's the Lord I believe in. And he says, believe. And when you believe, you'll say, the glory of God. He that believeth shall not make haste. He that believeth shall not be confounded. He that believeth shall not be ashamed. Yes, Lord, I believe. I believe those promises of God. Yes, I believe. Promise for the soul. Promise for your spirit. Promise for the present hour. Promise for the future. Promise of heaven. Promise of the coming kingdom. Promise of provision. Promise of healing. Promise of deliverance. Promise of sufficiency. Promise. Promises in the word of God. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Yes, Lord, I believe. And when you believe that he says, you'll see the glory of God. That's how to make this coming year. New year. Prosperous year. Wonderful year. A blessed year. A brighter year. A better year. A greater year. Than all the years of the past. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Why not? You have never lied. You have never deceived anybody. And you have the power to do what you have promised. And because of that, Lord, I believe. And you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You raised Jesus Christ from the dead on my behalf. And because you've done such a spectacular thing, what else will you not do? I believe. I believe. I believe he's my savior. I believe he's my healer. I believe he's my sanctifier. I believe he's my deliverer. I believe he's my provider. I believe he's my sufficiency. Yes, I believe. I believe he's the lover of my soul. I believe he's my joy. I believe he's a fountain of happiness in my life. I believe he's my strength. He is my fortress. He is my buckler. He is my tower. I believe in the strength of heaven in my soul. Lord, I believe. 
This coming year is to be a year of believing. And if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you can only believe, if you can only believe, if you can only believe, there's joy in believing. There's happiness in believing. There's healing in believing. There's salvation in believing. There's deliverance in believing. There's prosperity in believing. And there is a bright future in believing. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. There's victory in believing. Dominion in believing. I swear you believe what he has said. When you believe what he has promised. When you believe what he has prophesied. When you believe what he has predicted. When you believe the word he has given you. Then you know nothing can stop the joy and the progress of this coming year. What a year it will be. What a year it will be. Build the future on a sure foundation. Build the future on a strong foundation. Build the future on a spiritual foundation. Forget the past. Cut off from the past. Cut off from the past. And the water that flows under the bridge. Sweep away. Take away all the attics of the past. And then face the future with a new heart, a new mind, a new understanding, a new faith for the future. New courage for the future, a new victory for the future, a new standing for the future, a new strength for the future. It has happened already. It has happened already. It has happened already. It's coming year. It will be a wonderful year, prosperous year, happy year. Satan will not have dominion over you this coming year. Evil spirits will not have the final say. Your life in this coming new year, bad luck. Will not be present in your life this coming year. This coming year will be the best year you ever lived. Since you came to this world and since you came into the kingdom. Bright year. Wonderful year. Glorious year. What a future you have. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy people said. Blessed people said. The renewed people of the Lord said. I welcome you to the new year in Jesus' name. This year. You are clapping as if you are clapping for the old year. New year clapping. New year clapping. New year clapping. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you that things have changed already. I'm telling you that old things have become new already. Sicknesses are gone. Oppressions are gone. All those attacks of the enemy, they are gone. No tears in your eyes anymore. No sorrow in your heart anymore. And see new faces, new dresses, new jobs, new marriages, new blessings, new provision, new victory. 
and a new dawn. I said there will be a new dawn. Say, this coming year, I said, sage. I said, sage, this coming year will be a year of a new dawn. I will be a new person. There will be a new blessing every day. Those who knew me before will not know me again. All things will become new. And everybody said, and everybody said, if you believe with me, raise up your hand. Amen. I said, Amen. You know, if you were standing here where I'm saying, you see the glorious hands, you see the beautiful hands. You see the anointed and blessed hands. I see your hands. Whatever you touch, you turn to a blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come out of the old. We come into the new. This old year that, that has passed, Lord, we thank you for what you did during that old year. But then, all the sorrows of the old year, all the attacks of the old year, all the sorrows of the old year, all the sicknesses of the old year, all the calamities of the old year, all the curses of the old year, all the hatred of the old year. Oh Lord, all the laws that were in the old year, everything is gone in Jesus' name. Lord, I see the gate open. I see the door open into a new year. And I see my brothers, I see my sister, everyone without exception, moving on into the new blessing of the new year. In Jesus' name, I welcome you, brother. I welcome you, sister, into the blessings of the new year, into the joys of the new year, into the happiness of the new year, into the healing of the new year, into the deliverance of the new year, into the life abundant, sufficient, eternal of the new year. In Jesus' name, I welcome you into a new job. I welcome you into your new home. I welcome you to new prosperity. I welcome you into all the blessings of the Lord and new renewed in Jesus' name. I welcome you to this new accommodation this new year, a new success this new year, and a new victory this new year, and your new friends this new year, and to a new fellowship this new year, and to a new kind of achievement this new year in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that everyone here and all the people are hearing the sound of my voice now, this new year will, they be, will be the best year they ever lived in their lives. In Jesus' name, limitations are cut away from you. All the losses are cut away from you. As you come to this new year, there will be no limitation in your life. There will be no lack in your life. There will be no limit or loss in your life. In Jesus' name. Your enemies will not follow you to the new year. And all the problems on the mountains will not follow you to the new year. But Lord, this new year, do something spectacular, something special for every brother, every sister, in Jesus' name. In all our church locations all over, anywhere we're hearing this message, I pray, Lord, even those who did not know how to pray, Jesus has prayed for you. The Holy Ghost has prayed for you. Your pastor is praying for you. And as we join our prayers together for you, you'll come out of everything old and you'll come into the new experiences of the Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pronounce your blessing upon all your people. And Lord, with every anointing you have given me, I break every yoke in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that from this very moment as we enter into the new year, I pray everything will turn new. Blessings will overflow. Miracles will overflow. All the desires of the hearts of your people, I pray that you grant unto them in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. Confirm it in every family. And in this church, there will be nobody that will not receive your blessing this new year. I know it is done because we are prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. We know it is done. We know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said...
Now, don't sit down yet. Just close your eyes and put in something in your spirit before you go. This, uh, this new year, the Lord is your shepherd. You will not lack. He will make you to lie down in great pastures. He will lead you beside the still waters. He has restored your soul already. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. For he, Emmanuel, is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. He prepares the table before you in the presence of your enemies. And then he anoints your head with oil and your cup runneth over. Surely, I said surely, I said surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because, because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, he is my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and Adam. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. Hmm. Look at this one. Look at this one now. I said, look at this one now. With long life, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation? Go into the new year with victory and come back with testimony. Everybody, happy new year.